Hello, beautiful agents of awesome. Marvelous to see you as always. So um, today is Harness Your Gifts Day and I wanted to get chatting about the gifts of introversion and extroversion. Um, many of you, it, got, it, uh, it was prompted actually by a dialogue that was happening in, in our Agents of Awesome group today around uh, typology and uh, someone who was pointing out that we, we had a bit of a chat about introverted intuition and, uh, and the 16 types. And so I'm sure there are many of you in this community who have come across at some point or another the 16 types um, or the Myers-Briggs as others might call it and uh, in terms of personality or personality types. So I jumped down that rabbit hole many, many years ago. Goodness, it's probably coming on about 20 years or so now. And it happened when I was um, an exchange student, actually. I was living in Switzerland as a university student. I was there for a year to learn French and dabble in my French side and all kinds of other wonderful things. Don't ask me why I wasn't in France and I was in Switzerland. That's a whole other story. But anyway. So I ended up in Switzerland and I was having this phone call one day with my mum who was back in Australia and she was super, super excited on the telephone and she was talking to me about these letters and, you know, I, it just sounded so foreign to me. It was like ABC, XYZ, what? And, um, and I didn't quite understand what she was talking about, but I could hear the passion in what she was communicating and her excitement. And so that got me excited because, you know, she's an educator, she loves human beings, she loves learning about people and personal development. So I was really keen to hear more about that. And so when I returned from my studies and came back to Australia, I was initiated into the uh, 16 types world and went and did my training and uh, met some amazing people. And for any of those of you who have um, gone down that, that journey and if you've done, you know, whether you've done training in that area or you've done a type test, um, I'd love to hear about what, what results came out for you and whether you felt that was actually accurate or not. And, um, you know, my experience with it was I, I, I was a bit uncertain. Um, I did the test, you know, and I think I came out an ENFP on that, which for those who aren't familiar with that language, um, E refers to extroversion, N rever refers to intuition, F for feeling and P for perceiving, which, you know, each of those 16, they're four letters that create one type. And in this model, there are 16 different types. So anyway, I was really interested by that and a lot of it in the description sounded accurate and, um, and they had us grouped with different, you know, people of that type and I sat down and I was there with two ENFPs and it was like this banter, like tennis, super fast tennis was going back and forth, boom, 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 boom between them. And I was listening to it and I was interested in absolutely everything they were saying and I was relating with it, but I couldn't enter the conversation. And so something was a little off in that moment, even though I loved it all and it sounded right. I just, I didn't feel quite right about it. And so I sat in the kind of, I don't know, bucket for the rest of that training, you know, as other people stepped forward and said, this is who I am. And, and this is what I'm like. And finally, one of the last groups that presented was, uh, were, were two people and they presented in what was the INFP group. So the introverted NFPs. And, um, and I had an aha moment. I actually ended up in tears, which again, for those of you who are familiar with typers is no surprises. One, knowing me and then also knowing that particular type. So there I was, and one of them had this big journal. They'd brought their journal in with all of these beautiful pictures in it. It was, um, you know, uh, just, just this gorgeous artwork in itself, right, of self-exploration. And the guy was there and he was playing the dig and they took us to another room and they turned the lights off and they wanted the natural light. Like it was completely different to all of the other presentations. And so as the dig was going and as the journey work happened and I just cried and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm home. This is so me. This is amazing, right? So I had a very profound um, connection at that moment and in my own development. And so I jumped very deep into the typological world for a long time. I dived deeper and deeper and deeper to understand 
everything I could about this model and all of its different um, dimensions. What does it mean in leadership? What does it mean in learning styles? What does it mean in spirituality? Um, what does it mean in terms of challenges, childhood? all of that, um, how does it apply to all of these stages of life and areas of life? And within that community, I met the most amazing people who obviously are all about personal development and self-development as well. And they care deeply about other people and their success as well. And of course, there was the corporate side with teams and leadership, etc. So it's a very dynamic community. Um, and later on, the, the neuroscience element and Dr. Dario Nardi, who's also part of this community, is uh, a pioneer in, in that dimension of how neuroscience and typology meets. Anyway, all the while in that journey, something that I kept doing was just going deeper and deeper into the man behind um, the, the original model, which was Carl Jung. And the deeper I went, and any of those of you who have jumped down the Jung rabbit hole will know it's a very deep rabbit hole. I mean, not only did he talk and bring forth this model of what he called psychological types, and he described them differently, and I'll get into that. Um, but he, you know, dreams, archetypes, um, journey work, it's, it's a whole, it's, you know, realms and realms of amazing um, bodies of work uh, in, from, from Jung. And of course, even after his passing, and now we get the Red Book, and there's a whole other dimension to that. So anyway, what I had discovered, the deeper I dive down that rabbit hole in terms of psychological type or personality type and typology is that Jung himself didn't talk about the 16 types in that way. That was not his model that came much later. And I don't think that he ever actually agreed to that model as a correct representation of his work. What Jung was talking about and what he had discovered was at our core, he was really curious about humans, how we moved, how we were motivated and life force energy, what motivates us, what animates us. And in his observations, clinical, personal, um, and, and those of you who know Jung's story, again, will know he had an incredibly fascinating life and, and worked with really interesting people. He observed that um, one, there is what he called introversion and extroversion. So life force energy that moves in an extroverted way. So that is from external to the self structure and then introversion, that is life force energy within. And I guess you could think almost of a, like a layer of skin and psyche as that boundary between what is out there and what is, what is within, right? So the inner world and the outer world in really simple language. And um, then, of course, there's another layer to that. Once you, there, there are dimensions of introversion and dimensions of extroversion. And we can cover that in another talk. But just for, for keeping today to introversion and extroversion, let's just stay with that. So he talked about the importance of the inner world and the outer world. And he observed that we can operate with both. We have access to both. We have preferences in terms of where our natural psychosomatic spiritual energy resides. Um, and so that's where people talk about themselves as I'm an introvert or I'm an extrovert. But when we tap deeper into the structure of our psyche and how we actually um, process things inside internally and how we also communicate and interact with the outside world, what happens is we come to realize that we actually have access to both introversion and extroversion. We do both. We might do them constantly all the time, but we do them to varying degrees and with varying degrees of comfort. Um, and also because we're talking about life force energy, we also do it with various degrees of, I guess, intensity. So, for example, um, how you identify this within yourself is where you are, you're most relaxed and natural. So for some, that will be in their inner world. That means in terms of reflections, internal processing, perhaps it's inner visions, inner thought processes. Um, an inner awareness of, of body and movement. So these would be more of the introverting ways where life force energy is within the system. Or 
um, are you naturally more drawn to extroversion, meaning life force energy interacting and wanting to be involved and bounce off and bounce with the external world? So there's this movement that the psyche naturally has towards people, things, events, places, um, the tangible things that are going on in the external world. And in addition to that, ideas that are taking place in the external world structure that we can engage with on the outside. So again, that kind of, if you imagine that film between the inner world and the outer world, that's how you can discern between those. So, um, you know, I just went deeper and deeper down that rabbit hole. And I guess, especially because that initial experience for me, you know, something, this piece of paper, this test had told me that I'm more of the extroverted side. And yet what I discovered through this process is I was more of the introverted side. And then yet, as I went deeper and deeper, and it's been a good 20 odd years now that I've been on this journey of understanding personality, psychological type, how the psyche works, how life force energy moves through us in this way. What I've truly come to sit with now is observing the beauty in how we as beings can work with and manifest both in the inner worlds and the outer worlds. We can use both introversion and extroversion and we can learn, you know, once we identify where those areas are not our forte, we can then learn how to engage those. Um, so again, if you want to identify the areas that are not you, one of the quickest ways to do that is to look at the people that really piss you off. Who are the people that are so unlike you, like chalk and cheese, right? Oil and water, so unlike you and everything about them just annoys you, aggravates you, you know, sends you going in the wrong direction. That could be a really quick way or they trigger you. That's a very quick way to understand how someone operates from a very different space. And it doesn't make you or them right or wrong in, in any instance. It's actually that you probably are going on two very different operating systems in terms of one, how you're experiencing the world, two, how you're processing the world, and then three, how you're actually then moving into the world and interacting with it. And, you know, there are times where I've just thought it is a miracle that we humans can actually talk with each other and understand each other. Because when you really get to understand how different each of these worlds is, one, even just the worlds of introversion and the worlds of extroversion, when you start to understand what each of those lenses is like and how it operates, Really, I mean, wow, it's, it's truly amazing that we can, we can make things happen and talk to each other. And that's, of course, the most exciting part about relationships too, isn't it? Um, so again, you can identify those pieces that are most natural to you, especially if this is a new conversation for you. You can identify that very much, again, in the um, people who are around you that are very much like you where you feel so at ease, like you never have to say anything because it's, it's like they're going to finish your sentences. You know, you, it's, it's almost like you're two minds in one. It's so easy to be around one another. It's natural. There's a lot that you don't have to explain and things just feel um, in flow and in sync. So they might be, and we tend to collect those people often around us who are very much like us. And it can be, um, that can be a really wonderful thing to do. And it's also very healthy to collect around ourselves and have around ourselves people who are very different to us or somewhere in between, because of course that invites us to stretch and to learn and to explore different ways of being. Um, and you know, the reason why we have this conversation in this Agents of Awesome group on harnessing our gifts is because I believe we need all of us. Um, one, everyone must find their gifts, understand their gifts, learn them, feel into them, you know, then comes mastery and moving through those gifts and applying them in the world and getting to know yourself in that process. And then, of course, being in our edges um, with that and growing and developing those parts of us that don't come as naturally. And then the greatest part of all, in my opinion, is when we're able to share those gifts with the world because we understand ourselves, we know what we do, we know how we do um, and where it works and where it can be of service. And we can offer that into the world. 
And um, especially for my friends who might relate with being an introvert out there who feel, I just, you know, I don't want to talk to people about things. I don't know how to put language to things. I'm too shy. I can't stand up on any, any stage or any platform or, or anything like that to, to go ahead and do it. Um, I want to let you know from one person with dominant introverted preferences to another, it is totally possible, you know, when you are aligned with who you are in your core, in your passion, in your integrity, and you speak and you do when you go from that place, um, anything is possible and you shine naturally. And we need our friends who have access to those deep parts of the inner world, who are able to access visions, who are able to access the collective mind, who can understand and interpret dreams and bring those through, who can deeply attune to energy patterns within the body and read those and communicate those as well. All of this is, is so important, right? So don't feel like I, I don't have a place in this world um, just because that voice hasn't come just yet um, or you're developing it. it. It's incredibly important. And again, I guess another cheer lead for our, for our friends that, that feel a bit more introverted or identifies having more introverted preferences. Um, it can be hard in this day and age because we live in a cultural paradigm that is predominantly extroverted. So we are encouraged to be that kind of big, bold leadership to stand up and be tall and be loud and be heard. And um, that can be terrifying for uh, people who are far quieter, softer, subtler, prefer to listen, to take in and reflect rather than project out. Um, it can be hard to find your feet uh, in, in, in that way. And then, of course, for our extroverted friends, I mean, goodness me, this time that we are in now in terms of social isolation, this can be incredibly challenging. I've, I've spoken with many people who, again, those dominant extroverted modes of being. And when you're used to just being go, go, go in the world and, you know, you, perhaps you run teams, you work with people, I have no doubt you have a very dynamic life and, you, uh, you know, things are busy to then have everything shut down and feel like the world has just turned the button off, the light switch off, and you've got to stay on your own. And then you've got to go and figure out this technology if you want to interact with anyone and everyone is masked up. And, you know, I, I just think for, for many extroverted friends right now, this must be terrifying and um, really quite depressing in many ways to not, um, to not be able to have access to natural modes of being. So um, things will shift, things are shifting, things are changing, and wherever we are going as a species, as a hopefully more civilised civilization, uh, we need all of us. We need those with the introverted gifts, those with the extroverted gifts, those who straddle both worlds and are in between, those that are ambidextrous, and, and those um, who are beyond all of that as well and will be held down by no typology or no type model believe me i understand that conversation as well uh, and the restraints and constraints around you know structuring the mind and personality and, and ego structure i like to talk about this topic particularly with spiritual people because um i think totally my opinion you're very welcome to have a different one i think the ego structure is a brilliant thing i think it's um incredibly helpful because we need it to interact with the world to interact with each other and it is a vessel through which it is a vessel in service to something much greater and when we can hone it and work with it we um it becomes the vessel through which we actually get shit done in the world and, and that's important. And, and personality is exciting and dynamic and, you know, the quirks and all the rest of it, that's part of the fun stuff. Um, I, I think that's, that's why I love my fellow human beings because you're all so endlessly interesting. So, uh, boy, I ended up talking quite a bit on that one there. Um, hope you're getting something out of this. Uh, I can't see any comments at this stage, but thank you for those of you who have joined live. And um, let me know if this is a conversation you're familiar with in typology. Have you done a type test before? Let me know your type. Um, do you lean more towards introversion, extroversion, both, neither? 
Um, always exciting to hear from you. So much love and um, have a beautiful day.